I recognize this Ms. Porter from California. Thank you very much. And they say bipartisanship is dead. And yet, I am the ranking member of the um, Oversight uh, Subcommittee on Healthcare and Financial Services, and Representative McLean is the chairwoman of that committee, and I want to echo a lot of what she just asked you about. Um, she is absolutely right that we need to be outcome-based, that we had a terrific hearing on this, and yet did not get, I don't think, a fully satisfactory plan. I think what you've added to us very helpfully, Mr. Dodaro, is a sense that it's not just the FDA, that we have bad interagency, um, or I should, you know, sometimes bad interagency communication, certainly a much better opportunity for interagency cooperation. So I'm interested in the whole of government approach. I think we'd be happy to talk with uh, my colleague on the other side of the aisle about whether or not that's something we should have a hearing about, because I think what we took away, both of us, Republican and Democrat, from the FDA hearing is that what we saw with the infant formula um, crisis could very well occur again because we have not fully adapted and, and changed. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. That's why they're on a high risk list. I'm very concerned about, you know, FDA's got challenges on both of the fronts, on the food safety front and on the medical product safety, particularly since a lot of that is domestic or foreign production now in those areas. So both of their responsibilities have grown and I think it's a need to take a re-examination of their capabilities. You know, we've raised the, you know, the need for a workforce plan for FDA and others, and I'm really concerned about this because the, it, the part of this is, and I've spent most of my career trying to get the government to adapt to changing circumstances in their environment, and this has outstripped the capacity, I believe, of FDA to deal with these issues on a satisfactory basis. Yeah, amen, and I will just say that I, I think a big focus of my Congress, time in Congress, has been trying to get the government to adapt um, to changes in circumstances. So I take it that you think that the FDA's announcement to create um, a human foods program is only a partial solution here to the larger problem of interagency coordination that's needed. Absolutely. So I, I mean, I think that while that plan would reduce fragmentation and improve coordination, it simply isn't gonna get us to the whole of government, which is where we need to be. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't get to the root cause of the, of the problems. Um, now, as you know, um, doing the work and being outcome-based, as Representative McLean says, takes resources. The President's fiscal year 2024 budget requests an increase of $521 million for the FDA, about 10% more than last year. Um, I want to make sure those tax dollars are used wisely and effectively in programs that work, um, but I, it's hard to square with the FDA improving um, when, in fact, House Republican leadership is asking us to vote for a bill that would slash the FDA's budget by 22% or more. You just said that they have more work to do. Is giving them less resources going to help them? It, it, it definitely is going to be a complicating factor to, to ensure that you have those issues. Well, we haven't specifically looked at the, squarely the issue that you're talking about, um, but it, it, it is an issue that has to be carefully considered because it could have serious consequences. Yeah. Um, I want to turn to talk about the federal um, role in housing. Um, Homeownership is incredibly important to American American families, to their way of life, to their security, um, to their well-being, to their ability to have economic stability, um, and it's out of reach for too many, um, homeownership. Since 2013, so for a decade, GAO has designated the federal role in housing finance as a high-risk area. Um, and in 2019, Treasury and HUD did work to lessen some of the risk by issuing housing finance reform plans. They had 81 administrative recommendations to the agencies. Um, how many of these 81 administrative recommendations have been implemented? Yeah, I'm not sure offhand, but I'll ask Gorse Williams Brown, our expert, to help I respond. Yes, thank you. Um, I actually don't have the list. We're happy to do some digging and provide a response. I mean, I, I'm concerned that, that um, I, I hope you do do the digging, because we actually tried to identify some of this information, and we were having trouble keeping track of whether or not Treasury and HUD, they seem to have stopped systematically tracking their implementation. And we can't tell if these are finished recommendations or unfinished recommendations, and we can't assess 
the risk that we still face in housing finance if they don't do that. So I would like you to both track them um, and put it on your website so we can see who's making progress on these 81 recommendations and who is not. Um, I also want to just point out briefly, Mr. Chair, if I could, that you also made 35 recommendations to Congress on reducing risk in housing finance, and Congress has enacted zero. And so this is, again, like with the FDA, a problem both of agencies and Congress having opportunities. And we can't just keep passing the buck back and forth between each other. We have to act in concert to deliver. So thank you very much for your indulgence, Mr. Chair.